we're glad to see so many of you here and we're believing God to do a tremendous thing in our hearts and in our lives this day. Praise God. If you would, open your Bibles, if you have them, to Matthew, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start there at the tenth verse. Matthew, the tenth, uh, fifth chapter, starting there at the tenth verse. Praise God. Starting there at the tenth verse, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yes, come on. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you yes, come on. and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad yes, come on, yeah. for great is your reward come on, in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost his savor, where which shall he be salted? It is this hinge for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And they give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for the privilege and the honor it is to gather under the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for another Lord's Day. And we thank you for the privilege that we can come and gather and rejoice in the world, rejoice in our salvation, rejoice in our deliverance, and rejoice in what you will share with us this day. May your name be glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to do a two-part entitled The Believer's Influence. The Believer's influence and in this he talked about two things number one salt and then the other is light i want to talk about the salt today praise god and next time the lord allow we'll talk about the light i want to talk today about the salt of the earth the salt of the earth prior to getting that if you go back to verse 10 there and we'll begin to see that he has talked about, and this is the, the Sermon on the Mount we talk about a lot, but he began to talk about in the fifth chapter, again, going back to where we were previously and beginning at the 10th verse, he says that we are to be, we are blessed, and there the, he, the Greek means supremely blessed or happy, and are they, number one, which are persecuted, notice what they're persecuted for, yes, for righteousness. Persecute here means to pursue with harassing or oppressive treatment. In these days that we live in, if you and I are going to live righteous, if we're going to stand for righteousness, what he tells us is, is that we're going to be persecuted. Yes, come on. Go we're going to be harassed. And that we're going to have oppressive treatment. Now, if everybody is liking you and talking good to you, possibility is you're not living righteous. You're not talking righteousness. You're talking what the world loves. And so there's no reason to persecute you. And then the next verse he talked about, when men shall revile you. Revile here means to defame, to taunt, to reapproach. In other words, when he said defame, you're no longer famous with them. Praise God. They're going to call you all kind of names. They're going to call you and say that you are this and you are that. And so he said... In this, you need to know that you are blessed when this happens. Glory to God. Praise God forevermore. He said, in fact, re rejoice. That means to be cheerful, be glad, be joyful. In fact, it means to be exceedingly glad when they're calling your names. Now, that's something I don't know. But Jesus promised that the cost of discipleship will offset by the enormity of the reward 
disciple will enjoy. Look at this. Come on here. In heaven. Praise God. Now you're going to be here a short period of time. But your reward in heaven is eternal. So it simply means that God's going to so bless you and me that we're getting rewarded when we get to heaven. And that reward will be, uh, continue throughout eternity. Now, this is very interesting. It seems that Jesus promised an oxymoronic to call persecution a blessing. And what it means by that, he said you're going to be persecuted, but that's a blessing. That's an oxymoron. It doesn't sound like they go together. But he said you need and I need to get ready. Because what we are doing is going to be something that is going to cause us to be persecuted. Now, there's a reason for this, and I want to talk about this as we get into this. Praise God. And so the Bible talks about in the end of time, they will call what is good, bad. Hey, come on. And they will call what is bad, good. good. So the world is all mixed up. Praise God. And if you and I are following them and taking up with what they are saying is good, then we need to understand something. We're doing what is bad. And so there is a change. Something has to change. There has to be something where we really begin to understand something. And that simply is this. The world is in darkness. Yes, come on. And the closer we get to the end, the more darkness we're going to see. So it seems like Jesus is saying, hey, when they talk about you, when they call you bad names, that you need to start rejoicing. You need to get your happy shoes on. Yeah, come on. Praise God. Because they persecuted him. They called him a devil. And so then the world in this darkness is saying you are good or you are lining up with the world. You and I need to understand we are following the wrong crowd. You and I are getting ready for heaven. And if you are not excited about heaven, then you might not want to go. Yes, come on in. Praise God forevermore. Now here's some scriptures that I believe will help us. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more exceeding Yay. eternal way of glory. God said the stuff you're going to have to go through right now, them calling your name, they're going to call you all kind of names, call you uh, anyway. God said, listen, get excited. Yes, come on. Because it lets you know it's working something for you. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Philippians 1 29 say, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his yes. sake. Come on. Glory to God. So when you're going through, they're talking about you. They're calling you all kind of names because you're standing for righteousness. The Bible said you're doing it for Jesus' sake. Hallelujah to God. You're doing it for the glory of God. So if you're not suffering, if everybody loves you, it may be because you don't line up with the wrong folks. 2 Timothy 2 and 12 say that if we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Glory to God. The pressure is going to be so great for you to join with them with what they are declaring. What they are saying is true. What they are saying is the right thing. That you and I will have a tendency to want to just not say anything. We're going to have a tendency to want to just say what they say. So we don't go through all the headache and the hardship. And see, the world is constantly going to be trying to shake you and I into their lecture of truth. But you and I have got to come to the place that we have decided that we're going to stay with God. Can you say stay with God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says that praise God. Why is the road that leads to destruction? But narrow is the way that leads to righteousness. And few will be found on it. Hallelujah. Are you going to be part of the few? Yes, sir. Are you going to be with the crowd? <laughs> Hallelujah to God. This world is not going to like you in these days. Because it's going to come gross darkness. It's going to come that praise God. This world 
will be turning against Christ. They want to pull the statue down. They want to burn it. They want to burn God's word. And you and I cannot be fearful. This is the day that we said that we're going to stand with God. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. I hear you. I hear you. Go to God. Praise <laughs> God. Now, let's talk about this salt. I want to deal with salt today. Salt stands for permanence. And it also stands for incorruption. Praise God. Sister, can you read for me uh, Numbers, the 18th chapter, and the 19th verse, if you have that. Number, if you have, turn in your Bible to Numbers, the 18th chapter, and the 19th verse. Whenever you can find that, praise God. Numbers, the 18th chapter, and the 19th verse. Praise God, if you can read that. Okay. Numbers 18, verse 19. Mm -hmm. All the heat offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offered unto the Lord, have I given thee. And thy sons and thy daughters give thee by a statue forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord. All right, and we're going to do the next one. We're going to do the next one here, which is 2 Chronicles 13 and 5. Now, notice what he said there. It is a covenant of salt. This is very important because covenants were cut with salt, and the salt meant it was something permanent. It means something that was very permanent. All right, uh, 2 Chronicles 13 and 5. If you read that, please. 2 Chronicles 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. All ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel... Gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons, by a covenant of salt. All right, there is seen again. It's a covenant of salt. Now, this is just a few, but when the when a covenant was made by salt, it means it was permanent. But it also means a loyalty to it. That praise God, it will continue to do that. So Jesus is referring, and the people understood when he talks about them being the salt of the earth. Praise God. And so the Bible talks about in Le Leviticus 2.13 Leviticus 2.13 said and every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. Yes, come on. Neither shall thou suffer the salt of the covenant of the God, covenant of thy God to be lacking, look at this, from thy meat offering with all thy Offering, thou shalt offer salt. Yeah. Let me read it again. With all thy offerings, thou shalt offer salt. Now, notice he said in that scripture, it is seasoned with salt. Yes, come on. This reference to salt represents permanence and a loyalty to the covenant. If you and I are not loyal to the covenant God gave us, then we have not been seasoned with salt. Pure salt can lose its flavor, I'm sorry, cannot lose its flavor or effectiveness. I'm talking about pure salt. pure salt. I did a lot of studies on different types of salt and it was amazing to me. But pure salt cannot lose its flavor or effectiveness. Salt is both a preservative and a flavor enhancer. Salt was initially used to preserve. Now during that time they didn't have refrigeration. So where there was not refrigeration, salt was placed on the meat to slow down the decaying process. So you put salt on the meat. Now some folk down south know what I'm talking about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Didn't help. Had to salt that meat down. Hallelujah. To keep it from decaying. The salt was a preserver. But also salt is an enhancer. It's a flavor enhancer. Praise God. So salt was initially used to preserve. And so sometimes salt loses its uniqueness by either naturally being mixed with other minerals, chemicals, or by a process called leaching. Salt being mixed with many other minerals or chemicals usually will not be as salty. Now sometimes that's done on purpose because sometimes they put other chemicals in salt, like our table salt, they add iodine to it, praise God, or other chemicals to preserve it and to help it be more healthy to you. But it's not exalting because they are mixing something with it. Sometimes also it's done naturally. When it dries up, there's other mineral or chemicals get into it. And so it's not exalting. 
Praise God. That's called leaching. Either process will call the salt to lose its uniqueness so that it no longer has its maximum preserving quality. Now, pure salt, when they get it, and this doesn't have all these other things in it, it is 99.9% salty. And so, many times, it has to be refined, it has to other process to it. But again, many times when it's not unique, salt begins to lose its flavor. It's mixed with other things. Believers are to be salt in a morally decaying generation. However, when the believer begins to be so mixed with the world system, that is their leeching, the, leeching the value of the believers are affected and they lose their uniqueness. Hallelujah to God. Now, therefore, the believer is no longer able to slow down the decaying moral values of the community. Hallelujah. Now, you need to understand what we're saying. Now, leeching is, 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 is a process. And what leaching does is like when you percolate coffee. Now see, when you percolate coffee, you are trying to take some of, look at this, the insolubles out. All right, so that you make your coffee. Now, what's left is the, what we call the grinds. Now the grinds ain't good for nothing. Now you can take it and throw it out on the flowers, you can throw it out on the grind. I saw people do a lot of stuff with grind, but mostly it can be walked on. Are you hearing what I just said? When, when salt has been leached so much that it's no longer salty, it is good for nothing. And so what the people will do is take the salt and throw it out in pathways and then keep the grass from growing. When salt is leached, it, it can't do anything but stop from growing. And when believers are leached so much with the world, they can't help nobody grow anymore. So Jesus said that's when the salt has lost its savor. So they would take the salt and put it in pathways to keep the grass from growing so the path would always be steady. So the people also in some path, their pathway will have a lot of salt left in it. So it's kind of like you're creating a sidewalk. But it was only good for walking on. So people understood what Jesus was talking about. And when we as believers have got so mixed with the world that look, the world loves us. And we're doing things so the world will accept us. But the problem is, we didn't understand God left us as salt yes, come on. to salt the world. Hallelujah. To keep the world from decaying. And that's why now this world is not doing anything that the church stopped doing. And that was the world church stopped being holy. The church stopped living what they were supposed to live before God. Yes, come on. And so therefore the world started to decay. We were doing it in the church hiding. Yes, come on, yes. But the world is doing it out so everybody can see. Yes. So we're no longer salt. They no longer respect the church yes. because the church has become leechy. God help us now. Help us, Jesus. So we need. I hear you. I hear you. Glory to God. So I want you to understand this. That's why Jesus said, the only thing that is keeping the full judgment on this world is that the church is still here. There are people still here living holy and right, and that makes this world terrible for God. When the rapture happened, the church is coming out of here, and that's when all of the judgment will come on this planet. The only thing that makes this world terrible for God with his sinfulness is there's still salt in the earth. The salt is still stopping for decay. There's still people living holy and right. There's still people who will not compromise the word of God. And it makes the world angry. They call you name because your very life convicts them. I hear you. Let's take a look at it. When Lot lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, he no longer was able to season or salt the city. 
Also, he was not able to win enough people to Jehovah to prevent the city from being destroyed. Abraham said, if you can find ten when you see it, would you not destroy it? And God said, if I can find ten, I won't. You see, Lot was still there. He was still saved, but he had lost his seed. And so you and I need to understand this. That God said, it has gotten down to a number that I have to destroy. America is going through judgment because the church and the world itself has gotten down to a smaller number. And God said, I need to wake up my people. If I can just get my people called by my name to just humble themselves and to pray and to change their wicked ways, I can heal the land. But the number had gotten so small until it's becoming intolerable. And so God is saying to you and me today, we need to stop being like Lot. I know you're still going to heaven, but it's come to a place that numbers is getting, it's becoming so polluted that my church is mingling so much that I can only get Lot and a few of his family members out. God help us today. James 127 said, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Are you unspotted? Or have you and I become spotted by this world? We're so caught up in this world that we have little time for God. And these are the times that will test us. God will reveal to us because he's already know how true and faithful we are to him. We are faithful to everything else. We are committed to everything else. But are we committed to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out? See, and God said, listen, your works will declare. Your behavior will declare. You don't have time for nothing else. You will do everything else. But you are here for my glory. You are here for my honor. There's people that are dying and going to hell. And I left you here. Hallelujah. I saved you for this time. I saved you for this season. I need you to be soft this world and keep this world from completely going into darkness. Don't join them in their darkness. Don't become like this. When salt lose its uniqueness, it's good for nothing. nothing. The power of the believer's life to influence the world is to maintain its uniqueness. That is the difference from the world. We're trying to be like the world, and God said, I'm trying to make you different. Yes, come on here. Because if you're not different, you're not savoring this world. You're becoming more like the world. And therefore, you have no usefulness for me. Salt, as a preservative, it keeps things from decay. It cleanses and disinfects. Praise God. God said, I left you to disinfect this. I don't want you to be like it. Hallelujah. Disinfect it. Cleanse it. Praise God. Keep it from being decayed. Smelling up here. I'm going to have a judgment to this earth. Hallelujah. And he said, Come on, church, wake up. I still got some more people I want to bring in. I got some of your relatives I still need to see. They are watching you and they are seeing you become more like them instead of them becoming like you. Help us, Lord. Believers are to aid in keeping the world from decay and from corruption. Too much of the church salt is still in the shakers. Too much of the church salt is still in the shakers. Salt cannot preserve if it's still in the salt container. The world is not being salted. 
Luke 10 and 2 said, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, yes, it is. but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers oh, into the harvest. He said, I got my salt, but they're still in the shaker. And I need some laborers. I don't need you to join the world. I need you to salt the world. There's a difference between light and darkness. And I need you to be light wherever you go. You're going to stick out like a sword form wherever you go. But he said, that's your uniqueness. The world is dark. And darkness is closing in on them. Your light ought to get brighter. Yes, come on. Hallelujah to God. Please know, when you're looking at this world, when you're looking at television, when you're looking at the people they're talking about so bad, be very cautious because they're calling good evil. And if you are being convinced by this system, you better be careful because maybe you ain't living right. Maybe you ain't testifying to people. Maybe you're not telling them they need to be saved or they're going to hell. Now they like you, but you look in their eyes and see and know that they're going to an eternal hell because you and I are afraid and we want to be liked by them. True love is that I tell you the truth. That's right. That's real love. Not because I'm condemning you. Not because I'm finding fault with you. I love you so much. I want you to be with me. In glory. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have to tell you the truth. Even if you don't love me. If you don't like me. If you don't call me back. If you if you won't email me no more. That's what true love does. To say we are parents and we're not telling the truth. Means that we don't love them. We love ourselves. More than we love them. The danger to the believer is becoming useless. Good for nothing to the kingdom of God. That's the danger. God said that the salt lost its savor. It's not good for anything else but to be cast under the foot of men. The danger to the church is that we're becoming useless to the kingdom of God. Oh, we, we got the right sayings. Yeah. People like what we say. They like what we do. When was the last time you led somebody to Jesus? Come on, come on, come on. When was the how many people this year have you led to Christ? It's going to be important. But see, the truth of the matter is they're trying to find somebody true. I remember the last job that I worked prior to becoming full-time in ministry. I was in that job, and I tried to hang with them, but their conversation was ungodly. The things that they did was ungodly. And I didn't want them to think that I was approving of the things they said and the behavior. There were a lot of Christians in the group. But I started separating myself because I was not going to fill my spirit with that ungodliness. So and when I took my lunch, I sit on the table by myself. I didn't think I was better than them. But I was guarding my heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. And so I would notice during my lunch, one by one at different times, people would come over and say, Hey, Walter, how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. And I knew they were up to something. And they said, well, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. I said, okay. I need for you to pray for my mother. I need for you to pray for my friend. I'm sitting over there with the other table. I got other Christians over there, but I need to talk to a real Christian. How is it the unbeliever know where they come when they really want to be born again? Hallelujah to God. See, how is the unbeliever know a true Christian, but the salt still in the shaker? Sitting at the table with them, but afraid to shake your salt out. So, I found out that people talked about me, some of the Christians, you know, wanted this, whatever. 
But I found out years later when I left, someone was still there working. They told me, Walter, they still talk about you. How you were different. They talk about your influence. They didn't tell me that while I was there. But you need to understand something. They need to see light in their darkness. They need to know here's somebody who's unashamedly born again. Unashamedly of Jesus Christ. Unashamedly say, sin is sin. Hallelujah. Yes, come on. There used to be a song. We don't sing it much. We used to. But it said, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Another verse, so do not go with me. I still will follow. If I have to go by myself, I still will follow. If nobody like me, I still will follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me end this. Let me end this. The churches are large salt repositories. Come on here. We don't need to salt the salt. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. The church are large repositories. Come on here. Have a lot of salt in the building. But we salting each other. We don't need to salt each other. The salt needs to be shaken out. To help preserve the Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. We thought that church is about us salting each other. About us impressing one another. About preaching to one another. You got all of this salt in the church. Can we get it out of the building? Can we shake it up on a decaying world? God has left you and me for influence. We are to influence a dying world. I wonder today, are you salt for your family? They're going to tell you it don't take all of that. But when I got saved, it was by a young man who kept telling me about Jesus, and I didn't even want to talk to him no more. I told him to get out of my face. Stop telling me about this Jesus. He was so kind. He was a drug dealer. He was a pimp that prostituted women. But when Jesus got out he thought he was going to tell all of his drug buddies about Jesus. I'm so glad that he stayed the course. I'm so glad he kept telling me about Jesus even when I didn't want to hear it. Because the day I'm born again, he helped lead me to Christ. He refused to keep his soul in the shaker. And I want to thank God for him. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Praise God forevermore. Well, let me pray with us. Father, thank you that you are reminding us today that we are the salt of the earth. Yes, we are, Lord God. You're not looking to the world. You know the world is dark. But you also know the solution is that that salt in us is from Jesus Christ. That salt in us is the Holy Ghost wanting to work through us. And that salt is wanting to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To get on that which is decaying and to save it and to get rid of the stench in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That song is a covenant with a God that we are here to represent Him. Hallelujah to God. That we are His ambassadors in this earth. That we are to, like, to let that salt salt this earth. 
that God will not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That we're going to be called everything except a child of God. But the Lord said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward. Hallelujah. Great is your reward. Hallelujah. And if God said great is your reward, it ain't like great here. Hallelujah. It's exceedingly great. And it will be there throughout eternity. Hallelujah to God. So Lord, we said, stir us up. Stir the body of Christ up. We're going to stop making excuses. Hallelujah to God. We're going to be faithful to this covenant God. Hallelujah to God. Now God, give us no rest until we walk out everything you call us to walk out. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Praise God. Now let me pray. Maybe you're here. You're there in your car today. Maybe you're on YouTube. Maybe you're on Facebook. But you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Well, this time is your time. The Father in heaven arranged all of this just for you. Because he loves you. Because he has not determined hell for you. He sent his only son that he would pay your full price that you would not have to suffer the penalty eternally for hell today if you will respond to his call you can be born again you can be made the new creation in Christ Jesus He will make all things pass away. And all things will become new. Hallelujah to God. So, I first just want to pray for you today. And then with God's grace, I want to lead you in a prayer. That if you will pray and you will mean it with all of your heart, you will never be the same again. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that this day, God, that you would make them salt, that they will be a preservative for this world, that they will be born again and born of your own spirit, Father. You said no man can come to you. Except you draw them. Draw them the day, God. This day. Draw them to yourself. And mark their ears to hear what the Spirit of the living God is declaring. Oh God, would you not show them that they how much you love them? Let them sense your very presence right now. In the name of Jesus. Confirm your love to them. So that God they may walk this thing out. In the name of Jesus, we're praying this. We pray on this stead. Be reconciled to God. Thank you, Lord. Now I want to lead you in a prayer today. And if you mean this with all of your heart, I believe this day will be a new beginning. So if that is you, if God is tugging at your heart right now, don't resist. Yield to him and see what he will do. Look at that to me. Father, I am sorry for my sins. I am not ashamed to say that I need 
a saint. That I need a Lord in my life. I've been managing my life. And I haven't done a very good job. I understand that Jesus died on that cross. And then paid the full price for all of my sins. And I understand that he was buried. And he rose again from the dead. I also understand that if I invite Jesus into my heart and into my life, he will do it this very moment. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. Do it now. I need the peace of God. I want to live for you. So Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. And I'll serve you for the rest of my days. This I ask in Jesus' name. Say amen. Say amen. be the same again. So we worship him. We bless him. We give him glory. Great and mighty are you, O Lord God. Amen, amen, amen. Now if you did that, I would like to welcome you to the kingdom of God. You are born again. You are a child of God. And Sister Henderson now will come give you some more instruction. God bless you. All right, come on here, Baran. Give us some praise. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him the highest honor. Amen. Now I want to talk to those of you, first of all, that are on the Facebook Live. If you have just given your life to the Lord, we are desiring to follow up with you with some uh, information. Email to info, I N F O, at Marin Family Worship Center.org. Or you can call the ministry area code of 414-873-8687. And we want to be the first to welcome you into the family of God. Not into the, necessarily this church or this facility, but in the family of God. So if that is you, again, info. I-N-F-O at Center.org. If you are here on these grounds here in the Germantown campus this morning and you just gave your life to the Lord, can you just wave at me and just let me know that that is you so that that team on the grounds can get you some information into your hands right now? If you are here and you gave your life to the Lord or you were backslidden, you slid yourself right on back into to Jesus, can you just wave at us? You ain't got to be ashamed. Hey, amen. Everyone else has to come as well. Amen. So if that is somebody that is blowing their horn, can you all make sure you serve them? Amen. Come on. Give God praise and glory for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We want to also ask if you are a first time guest, very first time that you've been at the Red Family Worship Center. I'm going to ask if you will, if you would wave at me and then just blow your horn so that my folks on the grounds will be able to know that you are there and they want to serve you also. Amen. So the very first time you've been at the Red Family Worship Center. Amen. All right, so we want to give God praise. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise and glory. Hallelujah. Bless God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all folks blowing them horns and moments. Amen. Amen. I want to now uh, go through just a few of announcements so that that way we can get these. And then I want to uh, talk about all of these birthdays that we have. Um, want to 
start out with, first of all, this coming Friday, we have a marriage fellowship. And today is the last day that you can sign up for that and register for that. If you have not done so, feel free to do that. If you're on the grounds today, meaning that here on this campus ground, you can do that here. Uh, if you are Facebook Live or all of that, you can do it through our PayPal by going to our website. You should be able to see all of the information in reference to that. I can tell you that the attack is the strongest number one on the church and his people. And then the next would be those that have become one flesh. Amen. And we just bless the Lord for marriages. Amen. We give God praise and glory. Also, last week, I, I mentioned these different items that I'm about to mention, and I want to go back and mention them again because I want to make sure that all of you got the information because some of the brands are, are still joining us Facebook Live, also uh, YouTube, and not out here. So I want to go back to Josiah Anderson. This is, these are our high school graduates that graduated this year, and I want to give you updates on them. Uh, starting out with Josiah Anderson, uh, he graduated from high school this year, meaning 2020, and he is now uh, at college at Marquette University. Gonna ask that you would hold your applause. Will you hold the horn blower and the applause until I get through all of them, please? And then also Mariah Williams uh, graduated from high school and she is now at Shaw University. So Tyria Cross graduated this year and she is also now enrolled at Milwaukee Area Technical College. She also just been selected to be part of the Milwaukee Ballet as a teacher. Amen. We give God praise and glory for that. So Tyria Jones has been uh, graduated uh, this year and is also enrolled in West Milwaukee Adult Transitional Program. Dalos Sconers graduated from high school this year and is currently working. Amen. Also, Jalen Harris graduated from high school and he is enrolled at Toledo Ohio University. And then I'm going to give an update on Mariah Miller. She graduated four years ago and she has been accepted to play professional basketball in Finland. And she is right now sitting in Finland. Amen. Now come on, y'all. Give God a praise and glory. Hallelujah. 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 What an absolute blessing. Amen. They have so many of them graduated from high school and they come to college. And give God praise and glory for that. I want to give a loud shout out to all grandmothers today. Happy Grandmother's Day. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to go through the birthdays, and I am going to start back with uh, September 6th, just to make sure that those birthdays also got out there as well. September 6th was, uh, birthday was, uh, Sister Sandra Ratney Griffin. Amen. And then also September 8th was Sister Natalie Harris. Amen. Amen. September 10th, Sister Tanya Buckner. Can y'all hold your horns till we finish? Amen. Say that too. Amen. Say that too, Pastor Sam. And then also we are running in now to this week, September 13th through September 19th. And the very first one for today, September 13th, Sister Carisha Austin, amen. Happy birthday to you, amen. And then tomorrow, September 14th, Lord Minister Brian Brown. Come up here. <laughs> and then also tomorrow, September 14th, Brother Eddie Hatch, amen. Also, September 14th, my own uh, niece that used to live here with me, Sister Melissa Morrow. Come on here. Amen. September 15th, also First Lady Lanisha Sheldon. Amen. Also, September 15th, my nephew, Brother Chris Perrine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
September 16th is my Ella Harris. Hey, I got to take a minute to talk about Ella. Ella will turn nine years of age. And Ella, I love you. Hey, man. Got the other now. Hey, man. September 16th, also Sister Pam Leachman. And then September 17th, Sister Essence Stewart. And then September 19th, we have Brother Marlon Douglas. I want to talk about Brother Marlon, because he was also a uh, senior here uh, through our youth department as well. And he just graduated in California with a engineering degree. Yeah. So we give our praise and glory. Now, come on, y'all. Give him a little loud shout out. <laughs> Just want to also remind you that there's no group studies for the entire month of September. We're looking forward to seeing you right back here next Sunday morning on uh, live stream. Also, live stream as well as YouTube. Uh, later today, you should be able to get the upload for YouTube. Amen. Pastor, we appreciate you. We appreciate the word of God. We appreciate all of you that have come this morning to all of you to participate out here at the campus. We honor the Lord for you, and we give God praise and glory for what we even now see Him doing in the earth. God bless you this morning. All right. Praise God. Let's do the blessing. Amen. Right hand up, even in your car. <laughs> the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. Yay. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless. Have a great day. We love you. Appreciate you. God bless. Happy birthday, God bless. Happy birthday.